One of the Buddha's more radical insights was that our actions create the world we experience. This applies both on the inner world of our meditation and the outer world of our out of our senses. And the good news is that if we don't like the world we're living in, we can create a new one. Or we can decide not to create a world at all. And the, the Buddhist teachings push you in the direction of that latter alternative. Looking at the outside world, they focus on the ups and downs. There's a chant we had last night of the four qualities of the world that led Bratabala to ordain and leave home. The world is insufficient. The world is swept away. The world offers no shelter. The world has nothing of its own. It's insufficient, a slave to craving. There are also the four worldly dharmas, they call them, loka dharmas. There are eight, excuse me, there are eight altogether, four pairs. There's gain and loss, status, loss of status, praise and criticism, pleasure and pain. We don't like to think of these things as pairs that have to go together. We like to think we could have the gain and the status and the praise and the, the pleasure without the other side. But wherever these four things exist, the other four have to exist as well. The point here being that just thinking about these things as pairs and seeing them as they work out in our lives, that this is basically what the world is made up out of. This is what the world has to offer. And it gives and it takes away. There comes the question, do you really want what it has to give, if it's going to get taken away? There's another teacher, teaching where the Buddha attacks the whole problem of the world from another direction. Instead of looking at the results of building worlds, we, he looks at the raw materials. What, do you, what are you making out of it? Well, it's nothing but sights and sense of your sense of sight and the actual sights you see, your sense of hearing and the sounds you hear, and all so on down the list of the senses. And when you look at those basic building blocks, there's not much. Sights come and go, sounds come and go, smells come and go. You know, it's out of these coming and going things that we create our sense of a big solid world out there, of a place in which we live. One of the purposes of the meditation is to start taking that sense of place apart. They talk about the person experiencing nirvana, there's neither here nor there nor an in-between. Then how do you get from here to that place of no place at all? Partly it's through the kind of contemplation of the world that we these texts advise, either looking at the basic building blocks and seeing really there's nothing much there. How can you build a place out of these fleeting things? Then looking at the other end, what does the world have to offer? Things that change, things that come, come and go are given and taken away. And it's never enough. So the Buddha advice is that you turn around and look at where you think you are right now. It's usually the sense that you're someplace here in the body. So focus on that. Focus on that awareness of the right here, right now. And start really looking very carefully at that, because it's right there that you break through to a place that, of no place. But before you can do that, you have to get a very strong sense of being right here. Being with the breath often, as you get more and more focused on the breath, there's a very strong sense of being, becoming one with the breath. You're in the same place together. And for the time being, that's fine. Because as you get to know this place, you get to know all kinds of things. But you want your, you want your awareness to fill that place. How do you get it to fill it? Well, you start with a, 
one spot. Could be the tip of the nose, base of the throat, middle of the chest, the abdomen, the palate, the middle of the head. Any spot where you find it easy to stay focused. And then try to think of what's next to that spot. And then what, go out in a widening circle from that particular spot. Before you do that, try to get a sense of comfort in the major spot, because that's what you want to spread. The sense of ease that seeps out. Some people find it easy to think of their awareness spreading out to fill the body. Other people find it easier to focus on the body. What's right next to your spot? What lies right around that spot that you've chosen? And then what lies around that? And keep moving out, moving out, moving out. And although you find that your awareness of the body begins to expand, your sense of the body actually at the same time gets more detailed. Because what you're doing is that as you move out is you're relaxing the little muscles in your blood, blood vessels. And from the major blood vessels you go to the smaller ones, and the smaller ones, and the smaller ones. So it's a paradoxical sense of more getting more and more detailed as your awareness gets more and more expanded. Because what you normally do is you close off large areas of your awareness of the body in order to think of this, think of that, those places where the mind likes to travel. If you didn't close off different parts of your body like that, you couldn't go. So by shutting them off, then you're free to travel. Now as you're meditating, you don't want to travel, so focus on letting things open up, even the little tiny things, your sense of the capillaries down and your fingers down and your toes, all over the body. So to get to that place of no place, you have to settle into this place right here. And then from this place, then you can look at what you've got around you. And you find that you're a lot safer as, you, as long as you maintain this sense of inner place being located inside right here. As soon as you go stretching out to identify with something outside. You find that you're opening yourself up for all kinds of suffering. And the Buddha said there are different kinds of people and who those who can see the danger coming before it comes. And then there are those who have to be slapped in the face with the danger before they admit, yes, this is dangerous here. And of course it's best for us to See the danger of identifying, say, with forms, feelings, perceptions, thought constructs, consciousness, all the things that go into making up our sense of the world. Either as a, the building blocks or as the big structures that get built out, around, built out of them. You realize as soon as you stretch yourself into the, these buildings, they, they can collapse on you at any time. You're safer at not going into the buildings. Sometimes though, we find that we have to have a couple buildings fall on us before we realize how dangerous they are. But in order not to get overwhelmed by that experience, you need, you need the strength that comes from keeping the mind centered. Even if you can't keep it in here all the time, if you find yourself slipping out and wanting to live in this building and that building, this world or that world, do your best to maintain this inner sense of strength, this inner sense of well-being. So when those outside buildings collapse, you're not totally wiped out. You're up for the challenge of learning how not to do that again, learning not how to identify with with that particular spot, that particular place, that particular metal construct. Otherwise, without that kind of energy, you get totally overwhelmed. Challenges come and just not up for them. So 
So it's important that you develop this sense of inner strength, even if you can't maintain it all the time. Work at it as much as you can. Because it's the strength that allows you to deal with the sufferings of life and at the same time to find a way out. To be up for the challenge in such a way that you're not creating more trouble for yourself, but you're actually finding a way out of the trouble. Because a lot of what the practice is, is a practice of shedding, putting things down. It's like the difference between being a person who's eating in order, in order to put on weight and eating in order to lose weight. Your attitude towards food gets very different. And if you're really into the dieting, you, there's a sense of accomplishment that comes to being able to give, give up certain things, do without certain things. And you feel that you're healthier and healthier as you do it. As for the people trying to put on bulk, they're constantly afraid that they're not going to absorb enough and keep enough. and Anything can happen to make everything just going to go back down. So they're constantly trying to hold on, hold on, hold on, add on to more things, lay claim to more things. And it's a very def desperate mental, mental attitude. The attitude of learning how to do without, though. And this is not just with physical things, but also doing out with all kinds of other things that you find that you've been identifying with and yet are opening up to suffering. As you learn to let go, you feel healthier and stronger. Because you're not opening yourself up to the, the attacks of these worlds or the collapses of the worlds that you've been creating. And you're not wasting your energy trying to create more. The energy, this way the energy of the mind gets more and more concentrated. And this inner sense of your spot, your space that you have been identifying with, that gets stronger and stronger all the time. At the same time getting more precise. So you can begin to see what this is made up as well. Don't be too great a hurry to take this particular center apart. You want to learn how, you want to, learn how to hold on here so you can let go of things outside. And so then when the things outside are taken care of, that's when you can turn around and start taking this inner world, this inner spot apart as well. So that ultimately there is no here or there or in between in the mind. That sense of being in the body or the body being in the mind or whatever. Ultimately that goes. And when that goes, then any sense of being oppressed by either being in the world or the world being in you, that goes away. That has no basis. But before you get to that spot, before you can get to that spotless spot, let's put it that way, try to maintain this spot as much as you can. Let it grow. Let it develop roots. So when the world gets swept away, you're not swept away along with it. When Cain comes, when loss comes, you don't, you don't get involved with them. Because you've got a much better place right here.